ladies and gentlemen. You. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this. Tim, thanks for the demonetization there by using the Star Wars music. Well done, sir. Brilliant job. Hope you're all well, guys. Uh, back once again doing T3DAO. This is the third uh, episode of that particular um, build, I guess we could call it. So let's bring the guys in. We have the wonderful Tim. We have the wonderful Jerry. Marcel and Mr. Tripod from Tripod's Garage. How the devil are you guys? Hey, how's it going, everybody? Good. Yeah, I grabbed my head when I said, oh, no, it's going to go over 10 seconds long on the music. So I'll have to get I know, I know. I did. Uh, that's that's going to be a, uh, an incredible edit later. You know, my camera is still freezing, I think. No, it's uh, just because it's dark. I don't know what's yeah, going on. You are a little bit. Yeah, you got your hands yeah. right here. Right? That freeze. really sucks. We've got this one over here, so we have to wait and see what happens with that then, I guess. But, um, yeah, how are we doing? Have we got it all built? What's what's occurring? <laughs> well, we're getting there. Hello, everybody in chat, SV3D, Betty Boop. Hello, everybody that's watching. You guys want to call out the people on your channels and say hey to them? Hello, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi, Owen. Uh, I'm still <laughs> waiting for servo for mine, so mine's a lot more work in progress still, sadly. No servos. Oh, well, let's see where you at, Marcel. Yeah, so I got everything printed and everything is all good. Um, I just need servos for it. So, unfortunately, I don't even know if my tracks are going to work because, again, like everybody else, is minor 95A or whatever. So, they're a little uh -huh. bit stronger than TPU. I'll just have to wait and see. Oh, yeah. yeah, all disassembled. Tim, yeah. where are you at right now? What do you got going on? I had my uh, complete droid built and pretty much ready to go, but as you saw in my intro, he had a little fall. Initially, he didn't take any damage that I thought of, but when I went to put the electronics and so forth in place, I noticed some cracks in the structure. Mm. And then last night, while rebuilding it and fixing it, I dropped the whole thing again. So I oh. have, look right here, I am rebuilding the whole thing, and by the end of this stream, I will have it working. That's my guarantee. Oh, that's dedication right there. Ah, ah, guarantee. Dedication wow. and perseverance. Printed all night. <laughs> well, tripod, what do you got? Oh, going on? How, oh how things are it's on me. Huh? Okay, well, <laughs> okay, well, it's complete. Oh, wow, right. that's pretty. Real, and I have a camera, real camera. Upskirt. Up uh, and everyone was saying upskirt camera last time. Uh, there was no <laughs> skirts around my house. So, uh, and plus, you don't want to see up tripod. So, yeah. I have a, you no, know, I do have a problem though with kids that are toddlers. They'll walk underneath me and look up. I'm like, especially if I'm wearing shorts, <laughs> like, or uh, skirt. That's the best idea. <laughs> so, um, but I am having problems with my tracks. Okay. So, but if I, you know, work uh, like, you can see how it bounces back. And this is 85. And they're printed at 103%. Um, I can show you a video of, uh, real quick, of the camera working. All right. So give me a second here. Hey, Gary T. And uh, usually Bear will attack uh, anything RC related, but uh, he was doing pretty good. So. Cool. Yeah, so it does work. Uh, the head, I was surprised. I got to do some um, calibration on the servos. It, it, it just whips around really, really quick. Very um, nice. Like that. You can see it just back and forth wow. there. So. You have to tape a bone to your droid and drag it on a string. I'll vlog tape it. <laughs> uh, he loves, as soon as he hears a servo, he's right there wanting to chase. So. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it does work. I mean, I'll have to reprint the tracks. Um, or, you hey, know, it's uh, at maybe at 104% or something. Uh -huh. but, but you'll see that it still has 
especially the other side. Uh, what infield did you use? Got a lot of play. What's that? What infield did you use on that, mate? Uh, zero. Oh, okay. Right. Interesting. Really interesting. Yeah. yeah. I, I, mean, would, I, I think it's just a brand. I'll try and take them off and swap them around a little bit. I did that. I had some binding on one of the um, one of the sides, but as you can see now, he's um, he's whizzing around. Like you know, like a thing possessed now. He's uh, he's. Like, I've had one or two issues. You're uh, frozen. I'm frozen again. Am I bloody hell? Okay, there so there, there, you go. there you go. I've had one or two issues with him, but he is yeah, he's whizzing around, around quite nicely now. That full, full rotation on the head, um, and uh, you know, like I say, even when I sprayed this chrome color on it today, I just whacked it over the tracks. You know, you can see where there's a little blemish there. Uh, and then I'd sort of use a bit of dirty down and a bit of black on some of the elements as well. But you know, he's um, he's he's doing okay. You know, he's um, he's not too bad at all. And I'm, I'm dead happy with the mechanism. And bear in mind, you know, we were talking early on into this build about using six volt. This is four point eight volt. Uh, all right, granted, it's a new battery, so maybe it's running at five or or five point two or something. But the response on this is um, is just phenomenal. And I, I was talking with Mike yesterday, and we are considering doing a larger version of this um, with the same kind of track units that uh, I think we're going to talk about a little bit later on, which are which are these elements here. And each one of these uh, little prints here is an hour's worth of printing, and you need 30 of these to do the uh, yeah. to do the trick drive that he's working on at the moment. And again, that's TPU. Uh, that was printed on the uh, FL Sun Q5, and uh, you know I'm getting some good results out of that. This was printed on the uh, CR6. I'm um, getting mixed results with that, but only because of the uh, only because of the style of filament and stuff. But you know, hopefully this won't freeze up while I'm talking. I don't know what's going on today. I've had some camera issues, but <laughs> I, I love this droid. I, I think it, I think it's cool. I know it's got a bit of a mixed response with people, but uh, the motion on it, and you know, it, it's only missing probably if the head could just tilt left and right. Oh, and just keep cool. kind of, you know, if, if you mm. had that. One, if you had that one extra servo up and down left and right it's great but just that little extra just that tilt almost like what wally has you know where it looks at you and goes it's sort of like what you know that kind of yes. that kind of thing would be, yeah would be awesome so you know as i say there's um there's more to come on this and i you know i think especially when we're oh we're frozen again especially when we're talking about you know tpu being used on some of these tracks and pet g being used to you know to drive these uh, tracks here i think we're going to have some fun with that um you know as we as we progress forward with uh, with these builds so yeah good stuff all around nice awesome let me throw me over here for a minute and here's ryan Ad. here's my tito let me turn him on real quick and see what he's doing here <laughs> i got a switch on him i had a bigger battery pack in him yeah, I mean, look at how that head just flips around. <laughs> and he, he's starting to drive better. It's getting there. The servo horns, I had one of them was stripped and had replaced last night. And on TPU, as you can see, I have a lot of crap. <laughs> the blue wow. I started out with the wrong <laughs> TPU was like 98, I think it was. And then I got a different brand I brought here. I bought some Pryline off Amazon. And that was like, uh, that was the same as the Arion that I bought, that I had. And then I finally bought some Yo-Yi, which is like Ninja Flex. It's a really soft stuff. And I put it on the FL Sun, which has a Titan extruder and the soft film and can't back out in spaghetti and go everywhere. And, uh, yeah, it's getting there. So, yeah, I think I don't know if it has too much power, but it's just having a little bit of an issue driving. I even bought a pack of rubber bands. I bought a bunch of rubber bands. I put on that since that gear is angled so the track drives down. And I put rubber bands, and you're thinking the rubber band would grab the track and help it drive. And that didn't really seem to work. And then I realized last night when I was talking to Tim that one of my horns was stripped because the screw had backed out and it's sitting there spinning and it stripped out that horn. So I had to put another horn in it. And then earlier, this one was loose, tightened it up. So now it kind of wants to drive. But yeah, it's pretty cool. I haven't done any painting on it. I'm not sure if I'm going to, but it's, it's been a lot of fun. You know, there's always got a lot of projects going on. It's a blast. And I'm really happy that you guys are allowing me to do this with you guys. So. That's awesome. Well, I'll tell you what we do really quickly is I can see someone's just sort of joined into the room here. Uh, we've got a special guest on today. Uh, there's a guy on uh, on the uh, Michael Badley's Printed Droid site, and he has uh, – last week I was on, we, we were having a conversation, and this, this little droid really caught my eye. And uh, it's a fantastic little, uh, little project that uh, this chap's been dealing with. So I'll just bring him into the room now and highlight him. 
if I can. Trevor, how the devil are you, sir? Good day. Hello. Hey, Trevor. How you doing? All right. Welcome along, sir. So this is your pit droid. What's its designation? I don't have one yet. That's a, wow. a very oh, wow. good um, question, actually. Maybe somebody can suggest one for him. That is, it's, just, it's, it's, it's just brilliant, you know, uh, and the, you know, when I, the thing is, it, it is true, you know, when people talk, talk to me or have talked to me about like, oh, are you a puppeteer? Are you this? Are you that? And you kind of start being one or start learning those, those flexes. I noticed on Drinks and Droids, you know, he was just chipping around. You were just making him move. And, you know, that, that the way he moves, the way he motivates around Wow. is uh, absolutely i'll show my wife you know she was impressed it's uh i was really really excited and that's obviously why i reached out to you just to uh to sort of come on and uh, and and talk about it what's the um what's the process been like where are the fo original files from how much modification have you had to do to them trevor where, where are we at with that so they started with uh project 842 files um so i had the the fusion files from that and basically the process uh, started with sort of what did I really want to do with him. And it started with the head and trying to, um, basically I was inspired by uh, Matt Hobbs and Dave Ferreira's uh, version of their pit droid that had for the, for the cart. They have a little yep. trolley cart, um, go-kart type. Uh, build that Matt's doing that has the head move sort of side to side and up and down. So um, that motion and then up and down. And I kind of wanted a little bit more. I really wanted this uh, tilt. Um, yeah. Because I think that gives sort of that puppy dog, you know, a little bit of extra character to him. And yeah, it really, it really does. I think I think that tilt, you know, especially with with other droids. So if you look at, um, I was editing a video for the Droid Builder site um, for uh, for the event that we've got coming up next Saturday, and um, you know we were talking about puppets and we were talking about Dio, and Dio has three servos on his back on the back of his head that yeah. almost almost sort of gives surprise. So it's it's very much about not just about making something move but it's also animating it and interestingly enough i didn't realize it did the side to side but that's literally what i was just saying about uh t3do here you know that that side to side movement just gives it that you know human kind of interaction you know that it, it, it's it's incredible I, i'm so i'm so pleased for you that you've got something so bloody awesome uh <laughs> I, i'm I got credit to you mate. honestly amazing amazing his sure. arms don't move, do they? But you got to position yeah, his arms. Yeah, right? uh, so I do have arm oh. movement. Oh, okay. Um, on the elbows, I don't have uh, shoulder movement yet. So elbow and wrist for the two. Oh, this okay. arm doesn't work very well yet. But uh, anyway, does he have a name? Uh, does he have a name? So, so hang on, hang on. So this isn't finished, then. You, you're still developing this. I'm still developing. Uh, there's some more changes that I want to do. To I want to add shoulder movement so that you can pivot the arms up and down. But uh, that's sort of version three. This guy here kind of wanted to complete him. And this, these are the functions that he'll have. And then the third one, because pitch should always be in three, so you can sort of see the second one there. This is yeah. my static one that sort of started it all. Um, but the, the the challenge with with pit droids is they're they're not they're they're terrible in terms of um, real function because they're a CGI droid, right? Yeah. So the the arms are spiddly. The the head pivot joints in the wrong place. The you know everything's sort of very small and concealed. So trying to fit the animatronics in that was sort of the big challenge. Was was how do you do a joint that isn't really visible in the bottom here and and not have you know a lot of head motion and stuff you see they have the rods up from the bottom and and those sorts of things so that was the challenge that we started to solve with and and we tried a whole bunch of different sort of head joint parts starting with actually bd1 was was one inspiration there with how michael did that yeah um, so just so just one clear. So where where are where are all the electronics? Are they in the head or are they in the body? Uh, so 
the arms are in actually the forearm here. You, yeah, you can kind of, yeah, maybe not with that one, but the, the arms are in the forearm. So I'm actually the wrist is done with with there, and then, and then the uh, the elbow joint is with a servo in the forearm. Um, the head rotate, this rotate. There's a servo in the body in here, yeah, um, with a gear that goes up to a, a hollow carbon fiber shaft that goes up the neck. That's, mm. that's what we get the, the head rotate with. And then the head nod and functions are, are in the head. Um, I'm assuming on a receiver, when you go to control the arms or something, you flip a switch and then you go back to your joysticks. Then you want to go to the head, you flip a toggle switch. and. Yeah, so right now he's just very, very simple RC remote. And... And so that's part of the problem for animatronics. You kind of run out of hands and fingers, right? Like there's seven servos in this guy right now. So to do the arms is on just a slider, a slider right now. The hands are just on a switch. And then the head motion, you know, yaw is on one stick on, on this side. And then the other emotions are on that side. You fill the can full of water and you go wake your wife. You wake your wife up in the morning, have a dump of water on her. <laughs> yeah. And a picture. Yeah. Blame it on the picture. Right? So, uh, so it's, it's, it's good to see. 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 It just doesn't. You run out of hands, right? Like you just. Yeah. So surely the the next the next movement for that is going to be some sort of combos, right? A bit like the Padawan system, you know, the Xbox 360 uh, control, yeah. where you you can maybe put a combo into it and it'll it'll perform almost for you. It do a head tilt and maybe um, you know music or noise or whatever, exactly. something something along those lines, right? So, yeah. um, wh where where does the madness end on this build? <laughs> uh, well, this guy I'm calling him done. Um, Okay. So version three will will have uh, moving the servo because right now the servo and the body is almost impossible to to get in there and so to do it once was enough and yeah. so I'll I'll be moving that to make that better and then hopefully adding the the arm rotations and that'll be that'll be version three so I'll, I'll, that'll be the third one this guy here he's done and, and so the next steps on him will be add maybe add some sound. Um, I do want to add a camera in here and do face tracking so we can kind of, you know, move around and, and face track to, to you. Um, that sort of stretch goal, I guess you call it. How, how tall is he? About three feet? Three uh, feet? yeah, he's a hundred and yeah. Um, uh, what, 1. 1.2 meters, whatever that is, I think is the official height yeah. of a pit droid, but yeah, he's, uh, so, yeah. He's a, he's so a little bit shorter than our R two or our, our, uh, than an R two unit. So, so you said that he's going to be wind up going on tracks, right? Sorry. Uh, you know, wind up going on tracks. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> or skateboard. Skateboard. I mean, yeah. Unless you, well, unless you actually, really want to <laughs> make him walk around. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, walking is not an option, or at least I'm not doing it. Like the the. As I said, because these guys are CG based, it's it's a, the the joints and the and the motions are, are very impractical. Like they just they're they're not a very practical real droid. Like the, the joints are just so small and everything in here. So yeah. very nice. Uh, I, I do want to make a little platform maybe and have him ride my R six unit around, and uh, you know we can kind of hang out with him. But that's sort of where we're going with it. Does he have a Sorry. camera in the right there? There's no camera in him yet. No. Um, hopefully, maybe some point we'll get a camera in there and do some, instead, maybe some face tracking and some automation that way. Nice. So the, the question I've got, Trevor, is, um, you know, is this going to be a publicly available thing eventually, or um, is this just your uh, your play thing? Uh for, for right now, he's, he's sort of a prototype play thing that, yeah, I would like to share. Um, you know, I have to work out, because they're not, the base isn't my files, I have to work out how that works. Sure. Um, I've modified everything from basically the legs upward, um, but still need to, the original artist, you know, need to, to coordinate with him how to how to distribute files. So which is Sean Fields, right? Sean Fields, yeah. 
yeah yeah cool okay great yeah well i mean like i say there's there's lots of challenges as uh, we've recently found out within this group about uh files and uh how we uh how we can uh you know put things on and uh, and make them and uh you know we we strive forward to uh try and be uh try and make some awesome uh droids and you know try and educate people and uh like i say i'm so glad you came on because i was like i don't know you may be here might be not you know we don't know yet and uh you know like i say that is for me that is awesome and uh you know i can i can see that being a very very popular build yeah, it's not a simple build, but it's, it's much, it's not that bad though. And that's part of it. Uh, I'm not very good at instructions. So just have to be <laughs> talking about there and let people go for it, right? Amazing. Amazing. Any, anyone got any questions? How long did you take to, how long did it take to build once you started? Probably. Um, I'm pretty slow at the whole design part of things. So I've been probably working on them on and off for, you know, six, eight months or so um but to build him now like to if, if if i were to build another one exactly like this it would probably be under two weeks of print time okay to, to print him very cool where, where, do you live? Where, do you live? where do you live at where where do i live at yes uh, i'm in calgary canada okay cool oh <laughs> yeah That's i'm from my las vegas home. yeah Tim's in canada. i'm in las vegas nevada yeah, Marcel is in Canada, and Tripod is in the U.S. somewhere. <laughs> so, yeah, I just float around. <laughs> I'm in the northwest suburbs of Chicago. Yeah. Okay. You can never. Uh, someone can never say that they're from Chicago if they live in the suburbs. Just, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, be politically correct. Fair. What's the power source on that, Trevor? Uh, right now, it's just a. Uh, uh, I just have a battery hanging out the back. Just, just okay. like three <laughs> yeah, back just a regular there. RC battery, huh? Yeah, and then uh, you back in there, and I said right now he's just he's just radio control. So you will get, uh, you know, next steps would be a, a little bit more of a controller. If you have three of them, uh, you know, it's something I'm not very I don't know anything about right now, like the the animatronics sort of synchronizing multiple guys together. Yeah, that's um, that's sort of next on the list of, of trying to figure out, you know, so you can when I have eventually I'll have three of these guys. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and if and, they're all moving, you want them to move together and, and do things. Yeah. So some kind of and, controller and, there. Um, and then they'll be behind the bar serving everyone, all your guests drinks. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Staying high, right? The other one just cool. tossing it in the ground, though. Damn it. I think Pit just sort of have a lot of character to them, so they've been a fun, fun, fun thing to make them make them animated. Do you have a lot of other droids and things that you've built? Um, uh, yeah. Well, I've been working on stuff. Uh, I can kind of scroll that way, and then there's there's R six. Oh, nice. Um, so there's sort of my full size R six, and then uh, I guess uh, I go this way. You know, it's not. Right oh, he's sitting on the couch with you. That's awesome. Yeah, there's, there's a BB uh, unit. Wow, that's cool. Very nice. Un unfinished, but. That's incredible. That's I didn't know that he was sitting next to you on the couch. That's that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. He, was sitting here. he hangs out with me. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, there, so the two of them, so there's the two pits. This, this is what started it all. Built that guy first, and then it went like, Hey, this guy really needs to move. And yeah. Move. Anybody in chat have any questions? Please ask. Okay. Jason M, thank you very much for the twenty-five dollars. That's awesome. Amazing work, Trevor. Hope to see you back with version three. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Awesome. Thank you very much. Eventually, yes. we'll get there. It is very cool. It's it's very very cool. And again, it's just you know we, we're finding with this with this group of people is this this natural extension of um, amazing people that are doing some um, you know some absolutely brilliant things. And yeah, okay, you know there's a lot of people that do animatronics in film and in, in within that industry, but for the general hobbyist to be doing it and uh, you know to be <laughs> showing this stuff off, I, I just think it's phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal and uh you know all credit to you trevor thank you so much for uh, for coming on 
by all means, you can hang out if you want to. But uh, as I say, we're going to be moving on to other things now. We're going to talk a little bit more about TDO and probably about the new project that we've got coming up. And we're going to do a little bit of printer talk as well today because, um, and I'll move straight on into that because you know, um, on my last stream last week, I did a end of free review. Sorry, the camera's up here now because this one's going crazy. I don't know what's ha happening with that. So we've got the fluxing one now, I'm afraid. Um, so I did an end of free unboxing last week and it didn't go particularly well. But uh, in this mm. last few days, I've learned a few things. Comgro actually sent me a refurbished printer that hadn't been refurbished and it had been dropped, oh. which is why I had all those kind of issues that we uh, oh. that we we were discussing um and since then i've replaced the springs i replaced replaced the build bed as well and i can gladly say it's printing things out very very well at the moment in fact a lot of this stuff was printed on it and um and that's now working absolutely fine um but you know it's one of those things you know some you win some you lose it was incredibly frustrating at the time but it seems that uh you know the warehouse that's shipped it out may have shipped out the wrong equipment but um i think we've got there in the end but so i think it's one of those printers that just needs a little bit of finessing towards the end of uh towards the end of it but uh you know it's great and i say um i'm hoping to do another unboxing of the weekend i did have another printer that i was actually filming for which is the emmy cubic mega x which i wasn't mentioned in the name before because i didn't want to name and shame anybody but what ended up happening with that one is I contacted any cubic, I contacted their support team and they're shipping me out a new board. Um, they think there might have been a problem with the power supply. So, um, you know, hopefully next next week or two, we should have that and uh, we'll be moving swiftly on. But uh, there you go. So have we got any TD questions? Have we got any 3D printing questions? Where do we yeah. want to head on to next? In fact, Trevor, yeah, what, yeah. Printers, what printers do you use? What printers do I use? Yeah. Um, I use a Prusa and then I have a Tronsky, a Tron XY, whatever you want to call it, uh, 500 millimeter core XY printer. Wow. Okay. And that's working well? Uh, right now it's not, but it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one week everything's perfect, the next week they're not. Yeah. Yeah. I, I changed the belts and now it's skipping. So I think I've, uh, the belts are too stiff. And it doesn't like it, and so I need to adjust the driver strength of the of the drivers, I think, or find a more pliable, better belt. Basically, my belts wore out, and when I replaced them, didn't like it. Well, no, I just I, bought I, a new printer. It's not an FDM. I got an Any Cubic Photon Mono X, a big resin printer, nice. and I'm working on a as well. Board, but yeah, that'll um, be my third resin printer. Yeah, that that that's a really big resin printer. So yeah. I got a, is, uh, is, it not, is it not based off of um, uh, another printer, though? Isn't it like the Saturn or something? It's a rebadged Saturn. Is that right or not? I'm not sure. I know I've already got the Frozen Mighty 4K. I have the original Elgu Mars, which is cool and it's small and it works great. But I wanted something midsize. And I can't afford to spend $2,000 on a giant printer. But then again, uh, the $2,000 printer, you got to put like two bottles of resin in it to print anything because it's got such a big bat. So this mid-size should work out great. Sure. There's a question just coming here. How are you guys finding painting and fi finishing using automotive spray guns? Um, no, we're not. Um, in fact, look, most of us are using either rattle cans or uh, airbrushing. Yeah. Uh, Airbrush, yeah. there, is, there is a, there is a uh, process for this. And um, generally, it's by using, when you've printed, you normally fill it putty. Uh, Trevor might have a different way of doing it. We normally putty them or bondo them. Then they're sanded and sanded and sanded and bondoed and sanded and sanded and sanded. And then finally, we then primer them. And uh, then we use a, an automotive spray paint usually off the back of that one. So hopefully that helps you guys out a little bit with that. Yeah, I'm going to be uh, testing. I got this uh, mini. It's actually a travel. It's a battery operated. So I've yet to try it. So and it, it's a moisture. Uh, yes. It, uh, you know what it looks like? It looks like uh, one of those George Foreman grills. It does. <laughs> Is that an it's, it looks like a true. cheese toasty maker. What is it? Yeah, yeah. It looks like a, pin, a, a panini press, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Is that yeah, it? But it's, uh, but it's actually battery operated. It can last up to three hours. And you can use it off a wall charger. But I want something small because I have um, what Jerry has is one of those tabletop compressors. But I want something that wasn't going to be as loud. Oh, it's a spray paint machine. I honestly thought yeah. you were showing us a sandwich maker. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, so here, let me... Uh, Airbrush. Jason's yes, actually, wondering uh, how you can get better control in Tito head. It really zooms around. Is there any way we, that can be slowed down so it doesn't uh, swing around so much? Know, uh, there, there is a little bit of tuning on the servos, right? But really, it's very much down to getting... Um, let's see if we can move over here. It's very much down to... Hopefully, this is, this is still, not, still not shifting around. It's very much about um, your controller. So if you've got... if you Generally, if you've got a good controller, you'll get... You'll get better on, movement off of that servo, um, and as I say, you know you can it go fast, which I think is probably most most people have got problems with that. But it's again, it's a little bit of finessing, and with the more advanced controllers, you can you know reduce the amount um, that it tips, and you can slow it right down, or you can make things move very very slowly, and that's kind of nice, especially when you're using you know a bigger droid. You don't want it to be shooting off and flying around and doing all sorts of crazy stuff, and you want it to be quite gentle. Um, so yeah, new controller is going to be a lot to do with that. The servo is also a lot to do with that. But at the same time, um, you know, decent controller generally um, is is going to help you out and, and the way you uh, the way you should go. Hopefully, let's try the other other thing. It's still not working, man. I don't know what's going on with this today. Let's press this button. Yeah. Well, this that's how small it is. The presser. Oh wow. Yeah, and the airbrush is a dual action airbrush. Um, that reminds so, me of it. That kind of looks like a droid that we might be talking about soon. Yeah. So. <laughs> very quiet. Very quiet. Yeah. And it's got three settings. Sorry. I don't want to give everyone the bird there. But yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's a. Uh, well, it's like singing. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it, it. You know, I'm I'm excited to give this one a try. I'll, I'll provide the, the link, but uh, it has a a replaceable battery pack in there. So actually, what kind is it? Cool. But yeah, it's a. Uh, um, I otherwise I've been using what everyone calls as rattle cans. So I haven't been using an airbrush, but I'm excited to finally get back into airbrushing. I haven't done it in over 30 years, so. Well, you better hurry up, buddy. You're not getting any younger. <laughs> oh, man. That's well, all my droids are rattle cans. <laughs> so basically, I could buy better stuff, is what Jason said. Well, kind of. You, you sort of get what you pay for. You know, the, the idea with these mini droids, um, you know, I wouldn't want to run a, you know, 100 kilo R2D2 off of a, uh, off of a $20 uh, head, handset, you know. That's that, that's not what this is about. I think uh, I think we'll, uh, you know. But again, you know, a, a cheap Spectrum radio. You know, you might be able to pick one off eBay for forty to sixty dollars, something like that. Um, and they uh, and they do obviously go up past eight hundred quid, depending on what you're doing. But um, you know, that's you get we we oh, bloody hell, it's on camera. Honest to God, I don't know what's going on today, guys. I tell you what, that's uh, it's enormously frustrating. I don't know what's going on. Uh, yeah, I used to have a Spectrum DX6i, I think it was called, when I sold it to about two years ago. And so this time around, not having much money, I got on Amazon the same as Tripod, and I bought a Fly Sky. Uh, Fly Sky is like 50 bucks, and currently it's working for the smaller stuff. But if I get into bigger, fancier droids, then I'll have to buy more sophisticated controllers. So, yeah, I mean, we're, talk we're talking about things that have got, you know, decent fail-safe cutoffs and things like that. You don't want the If you lose power or if it... For somehow the signal gets interrupted or something like that what you don't want these things doing are flying off into the distance and uh you know smashing into something you know an, an insurance uh you know uh, personal you know some sort of indemnity insurance for you to run these things around at a larger scale is um you know is certainly quite important as well um the, the builders club in the uk here you go through a process of uh you know like an mot so an mot is a bit like a uk car certificate you have to do it every year same with the uh, same with the uk droids and we just make sure that things are not going to burst into flames they're not going to you know mutilate a small child or crash into something and cause an enormous amount of damage so we do have um, we do have quite a lot of rigor um for you know for robots going to events and doing events within the uk so um yeah i mean like i say again you can get you can get cheap radios that still have fail safes on them so you know it's uh it's interesting. So let me ask you this. I'm on here 
earlier than I normally am because uh, we got on here at 11 o'clock UK time. So that's because you guys have already, you've got daylight savings already, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like with two weeks ago or something. Yeah. Oh, look, at the, look at the guy that smashes his droid. Gets it oh, he roll. likes smashing them. Cool. Yeah, Move and, and he gets it to roll. I, I think this is a rigged stream. Rigged. Um, so right now, I, I'm gonna see if I can find a, a better link. Right now, it, I bought mine off uh, this airbrush off of Amazon, and it's currently not available. So I may have bought the last one. So <laughs> wow. on your radios, you can look for exponential functions that can help smooth out around centers. So they're not as uh, jittery. Most radios have expo. Or on like a Fry Sky, you can do what's called, uh, you can just slow it down. So you say, um, take one second to go from zero to the end. And so I, I've done that on, on some of these to, to slow down the motion so it's not as jittery for the hands, for example, or, or even the head. What so type of controller are we talking about? On doing that. What type of controller are you talking about where you can tune them down? Uh, uh, FR Sky is is the brand name. Most of them can can do that. They run uh, something called OpenTX. It's the software. Uh, okay. This one here is a Tyrannus 9D. It's a little bit a little bit of a higher end model, but um, the like the QX7 or the QX7X, I think they're called. They're they're quite an inexpensive radio that has all of the all of those features and so you can put in a mix that's basically says take you know take this time to go from here to here uh -huh. or or you, you can add you can adding curves and stuff like that as well can't you to these you can add in like curves and things can't you to the radio so it, it you yeah. know it, it doesn't it doesn't just shoot off or you know jump around too quickly yeah that's cool yeah yeah that's cool i mean like i say you know the the, the box down a radio in the uk here is to is to buy a spectrum I have bought a couple of really, really, really cheap radios because uh, family members have asked for little R2s and things like that. So, um, you know, they're going to run them round, tip them over, let the dog eat them, um, and then, you know, probably give me the radio back and ask me to build, you know, build them something else. But, uh, you know, that's, um, again, the, the, the market that we're looking at for these particular small droids are, you know, really kind of budget. Uh, I am... You know, let's say, for instance, you've got an Ender 3, you're doing some prints and you want to print something small. Um, great. You know, that's the uh, that, that should be relatively easy. And again, like Jason saying there, you know, uh, again, it depends very much on the radio that you've got. There are so many out there. It's difficult to give advice on stuff that you're not maybe using all the time. So, you know, it's uh, it's, it's all that the devil will be in the detail and probably Google. Um, but uh, if anybody knows, you know, ask away Let's, and, and, you know, share the wealth. Don't Mr. Bagley have an app that either him or somebody else is working on where you can control the smaller ones with the cell phone? I think okay. so, yes. Yeah, I uh, so, so I did the – I helped Michael with that. There's a little board that you can buy. Basically, there's a Nano with a um, an H, HM10, I want to say, a Bluetooth controller, and you can create a little app. And then the uh, got one. a couple of servos. So yeah, that's nice. uh, yeah that one. I just don't have the Bluetooth module attached to it right now because it's on order. But yeah, right. So, yeah, the SD card goes in the bottom module. Okay, cool. Yeah, those are for the um, yeah, it's the DF player. So I, I did the board design for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're 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 as dealers for Jason. <laughs> Jason M lives here in Las Vegas. Um. But yeah, and then, and then if you're looking for Arduino stuff to, to, to smooth the servos out, it's called servo easing. And you can, uh, there's lots of uh, libraries for that that do this sort of acceleration in and out. So if you want to control it from a, an Arduino or something, then you can do a servo easing library. Yeah, to, the control, the, the old school controllers from these RCs, uh, that was built into the controller and the servo easing where. It was just normal because a lot of times if you were racing, you would want the quick steering versus if you were going to be in a, on a truck, you don't want to take that turn quickly. Yeah, so it's expo functions. On most radios, it's called expo yeah. um, on the old on the old standard radios. Basically, smooth, or lowers your, your uh, sensitivity around neutral so you have a nice smooth, uh, you know, which should work well for the for Tito and those other droids. Or... Mm -hmm. 
fire up the CAD and change the gearing. Um, that's probably the easiest way to do it or another way to do it. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. But again, you know, the, the, the idea of this, Trevor, is just to um, to show people how, you know, potentially how easy these things are to build and uh, to bed them in easily. Uh, you know, we did a three hour live stream to get the first uh, droid working for everybody. And, uh, you know, like I say, it's, uh, it's, it's a, it can be a labor of love. And, uh, like, you know, as I say, it's uh, we just want to try and the idea is just to try and educate people. We, it's a slow grower. So we want to build people up to. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to scare people off. Is what I'm saying. You know, there there are some very complicated systems that we could put in. Do is a good example of that. Um, but you know, it's that's a labour of love that one. Um, but a very cool build. Very cool yeah, build. Our, our first droid was this one. If anybody was watching, I didn't see it. Here's the first one we built. Here's my variation of it, the way I painted it. And the biggest problem I had is I was building it on the stream and it comes with a PDF file that you can either print out or have it on your screen and, you know, follow it. And it was very easy to follow, but I kept asking people on the stream, how do you do this? How do you do that? All they had to do is read the paperwork. So if you follow the paperwork, it's usually no big deal. And if you're having trouble, you can get on Facebook, you can message a lot of us. There's a million people out there that can help you with, uh, not a million, but a lot of people out there can help you with your build if you're having trouble. So yeah. Fantastic. First droids to build. Yep. Absolutely. And we will build up to other things as well. You know, we are, yeah, very nice, very nice. Yeah, um, we are building up. And uh, what I will try and do, if I can share my screen, I might not be able to. Yes, I can. Hang on a minute. So I think, let's have a look. I think, so right. this week, uh, Michael Gabelli um, brought out a bb8 track hybrid um and i know this dome quite well because he actually cadded me up a bb8 dome that originally fits onto a um an r2d2 and i was going to try and use that for a project that i was uh, i was working on at the time now this particular one hopefully i don't know if you can you see the mouse if i mean yeah, you can right so this particular one um has has got some connotations it's been made into a, uh, it's been photoshopped. it's been photoshopped a few times of course um but it's it, it looks like it's incredibly popular with uh, 76 comments now this drive system here now you'll notice this bit here very much looks like t3do right so you can already see that this little element here is you know a little throwback to r2d2 I'm not too sure about these wings, but there you go. That's what they are. Um, and then, of course, we've got like a BB-8 style dome. Now, from what I understand, with this particular droid, if you don't like BB-8, if you're an anti-BB-8 person, you can print a different dome for this. Michael's also going to be producing the domes at whatever scale this is at. Now, these individual tracks here are TPU, and they're running at, uh, I think he uses Ninja Flex for these. I'm going to be using a similar for that. And there's 30 of these, and they take around about an hour to print. So you've got 60 in total. Uh, the motor sits inside here, and it drives a uh, PTG uh, cog, and it runs both of these, this one at the front, one at the back. And uh, I don't know if I can find – let's have a look and see if I can find his uh, – let me get I'll come out of this a second. Uh, see if I can – I was just going to say, I'm, I was absolutely surprised that it wasn't using some type of uh, pre-existing tread system that you could oh, just cool. buy. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's yeah. neat. So this is the, this is the, so yeah, so I, I mean, you know, this is what Mike's been trying to sort of get off the ground for a while. I know he's been working on this for some time. So, um, you know, this is using two small um, motors. In fact, they're the same motors that go inside of uh, Badley's DO droid, the little, uh, little uh, rise of skywalker droid um hang on i'll come back out of there now and how do i get rid of that <laughs> oh, the joy of technical technicality here we go yeah so um i start the earth in a globe right on a ball it has a beginning and an end point that's it say that's not the end of it say there there were land masses found beyond what we're told is the end pole of the earth what's going on is that me what's going on yeah <laughs> 
God what? dear. I don't know. I was like, <laughs> is someone just having like a moment, man? I was like, oh my word. I'm like, are we watching Ancient Aliens? I had no idea what I we were doing. No <laughs> <idea. laughs> we've already, we've already been demonetized <laughs> from this stream, thanks to Tim. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, yeah. Well, now it's the same, thanks to Sam and Tim. <laughs> yeah. No. No, 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 because the because the Eminem stuff is an Eminem. Ah, okay. So, yeah, uh, at the beginning, I'll probably I'll get a demon demonetization, and then Streamyard, I can go and I can edit on stream on face on YouTube, and they'll edit the video, and it'll blank out that sound. And so. Tim now has to pay us each a hundred dollars. <laughs> I will. I honestly didn't. <laughs> I seen that on Facebook, but I didn't realize it had music with it. So in the future, we need to rerun things before we go live to see what we're yeah. doing. Yeah, Trevor, we had uh, we had Michael um, McMaster on, and he uh, he was showing us Wally, and uh, he started playing a song from Wally, and everybody yeah. just got hit straight away. It was really funny, but Jerry was like, "Oh no, yeah. what's going on?" And I was like, "Oh shit, yeah. man, it really sucks. This is uh, this really sucks. yeah, copyright Nazis, say." Eh? Definitely, definitely. So, you know, like I say, so um, the, the idea, guys, is, you know, do we want to do um, this new droid or do we want to do something else or do we want to go away and think about it for a little bit? Um, I'm already kind of partly building some of these elements already. It isn't, uh, you know, it's going to be a more technical build than uh, T2 or anything that we've done before. But we, no, are, we are scaling things up here and the materials are very much about uh, pet G, the majority is going to be pet G, unless you want to do the dome in PLA or, or whatever. Um, and the tracks are tricky, they are tricky to print. And you've got a good 60 hours worth of printing in um, flexibles there. And the reason it's in, you can print it in whatever you like, of course, but the reason that it's in flexibles is because you want to try and get that grip on the floor, whatever, whatever you're, you know, whatever you're on, you want to try and get that, that hard grip and stuff. And what I'm sure, kind of infill, what kind of infill are you using on those and layers and stuff? 15 percent uh and two layers okay and pla plus i just ordered 10 rolls from a company here in the u.s called gst 3d that a special 10 rolls of pla plus for 100 bucks free shipping so i got 10 rolls how would that far uh fair i've never tried pla plus before but, uh, body wise uh, it'd be totally fine but I, I would recommend for anything to do with gearing or when you're turning stuff especially stuff like you know like this you know you um, want to be you want to make sure you don't want any heat around that and it's got to be hard wearing as well and um, my experience with with pla let's see if this is going to work no it's not my experience with yep. pla and certainly when i've been working with dio the the external of this is all pla this part in here there's a little motor in here if you can just see that there there's a little motor inside there that is this motor okay this motor gets really hot so certainly if you're racing it around and stuff right so yeah. that motor or if you're using PLA, what happens with PLA? It doesn't melt or anything like that. What it does is it becomes, um, it 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 melts, but it doesn't sort. Of, it's not like a dripping melt, right? It's kind of like a, a softening of the plastic. And all that happens is like the screws come out and things just don't work anymore. Since it's yeah. been PET G and this whole bottom layer, this red layer here is PET G, um, okay. absolutely fine, no issues at all. And I race it round. I've I've tried to break it. That's you know. <laughs> I've really put it through its paces, but uh, PTG, and uh, again, I would say certainly for the, so what happens with this is this is the internal frame. The motor just sits inside here. There's two little holes in here. That gets mounted inside this frame. Um, there's another piece on the top. It drives this gear. This little gear drives the other gear. That clicks to the motor, and you basically got yourself a drive system. So um, I would say probably the best thing that we can maybe look to do is try and create the drive system over a period of, you know, next Friday, the Friday after, something along those kind of times, um, and just be kind of cool and casual with the, uh, uh, with the, what does that say? Malleable? Yeah, malleable. It's uh, okay. when it's, it's, it's like a Play-Doh becomes uh, malleable. That's where mm, sure. uh, dripping yeah, we, plastic. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So, like, so, like I say, when when I've when I've used that previously, the motors do get warm. They don't get hot. They're not piping hot, but they, because you've got that amount of tension on it, and it's constantly pulling like this. You want to make. You don't want to be doing this twice. So, like no. I say, you're gonna use a use a hard a harder. Um, don't have to use pet G. You could use something else. You could use the nylon if you wanted to be super technical about it. But uh, pet right. G kind of works for this, and that's what's being recommended. So, uh, you know, I, I go with the recommended way because. <laughs> 
you know, that's that's the best best route for me. Um, on the TPU side, I am using a stock TPU from Amazon. Um, it was probably the cheapest TPU that I could find. I'm printing that on the Q5 hor horrendously well at the moment. Uh, I think I've got five on there at the moment. Wow. I've been doing them singly to start with because, you know, they were falling over. Uh, and the other thing I've, I've learned this week is I've, for the very first time, moved away from Cura. And I've never used, in five years, I've never used anything else other than Cura. And can you guess what I've gone over to use instead? Prusa. Prusa. Prusa Slicer. Yes, indeed. And um, it's it's different. It, you know, all right, the, the software package is, you know, similar and all that kind of stuff. But the the print quality is different uh and in all intents and purposes in fact i can show you let me show you uh what camera can i go to right so did you watch any particular video when you set it up or did you just fly by the seat of your pants and install it and figure it out no i just chucked it on there so this was what was this on this was cr6 se on see if we can get that to zoom cr6 se no that's crap hang on let me go to the other camera right where are we hey <laughs> where's the camera gone it's on the floor man it's <laughs> a good spot it's going on, oh, it's here. hello hello right okay let's get this uh sorry if anyone that's feeling sick so this is ming in yeah yes yeah. it's pretty ugly that's mm -hmm. cura right exactly the same file oh wow yeah. Bruce slicer so wow. look i mean i'm no expert on this sort of stuff but there's a difference there between the two, right? Yeah, it's a it's a noticeable right. difference. They, they, you printed look, them, you printed they them look identical right. to me. You printed them that <laughs> orientation up, right? Yeah, yeah, same orientations, the whole lot. Um, just a different slicer. So, you know, it, it just goes to show that you know, and I, I was I wasn't a doubter of it, but I, I just got I was printing some stuff today, and I was like, I'm just going to try it and literally download the. Uh, if you haven't used it already, download it, have a look. You select it doesn't have to be a pro so you can select any kind of printer and the the manufacturers that have been hot to to embrace it they've got their information already on it or the user user groups have put them on there tons of different filaments select the filament type it might be a generic or it might be a specialist filament hit the button and away we go so i'm, I'm really really impressed hmm. super, super impressed you saw me yeah, well, that's, that's good. <laughs> that's good. That's good. So, what are we thinking then? So, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, even, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what this one's even called. You know, it's kind of BB8 track BB8. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and again, it looks I think, like the sports edition, it looks like a race big, car. Big yeah, so I mean, I want to say if we go away. You know, we try and yeah. we try and get done with the tracks um, for next Friday. You know, they don't have to be built or anything like that. There is there is a little bit of purchasing to do. There's a there's two motors. Um, there are some metal rods that go through the. Um... <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. It's just, I've just had a good experience with them today, and you know, I've, I've got the end of three, which is finally printing and, and working. That's also mm -hmm. using the slicer, and again, I'll just give it a go and see what happens. You know. Um, but yeah, but as I say, going back to this, you know, um, it looks pretty good. So let's get the tracks done and then see what we see where we can go from there, I guess, is, is maybe one of the best bits. Someone saying yeah. no, laugh out loud. What's that all about? No, laugh out loud. Yeah, non stick. Might be a non Prusa like know. a maybe, yeah. <laughs> Miss Maker, all major slices can be. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I, I totally get that. But you know, I'm talking about opening the package up, and it just works. Uh, and it and you know, it is what it is. So uh, no, <laughs> it's back, uh, next Friday. We're yeah, going yeah, back yeah. week. Loyal yeah. Moses, awesome. Fifty dollars, nerds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, just a little. So. Yeah. I mean, yeah. look, there, I know there are slices out there, but I've always, the thing is, I've always used Cura and I've always had, you know, reasonably good results out of it. And just, I thought I'd just try something new today. You know, it's a bit like um, Tripod, and we found out earlier that he likes to wear dresses at the weekends. <laughs> I do. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, you know, I didn't know. I didn't know I was that adventurous. <laughs> Hence I the upskirting. 
But um, yeah, like I say, it's uh, it's, it's good stuff. <laughs> what slices do you, you guys use out of uh, interest? I've been using I've, uh, I've been crucifixer exclusively. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry? I, I simplified 3D, but I need to get into something else. Yeah, yeah. I mean... Yeah, like I said, I've been a big Cura fan for a long time, and it, it's, it's quite powerful. But I was looking through Prusa Slicer earlier, and there was this um, wind guard. So it will print almost like a perimeter. It print like a Donald Trump wall around your print. Um, <laughs> so uh, so that you, know, you don't get any kind of airflow through it, which I thought was kind of yeah. interesting as well. Yeah, hmm. I've, I've uh, only used uh, Cura because I'm waiting for to have a Prusa to use Prusa. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so. Are we coming back it's next Friday? Or right? or I use it for my, my big printer. I use Prusa Slicer. You've got to get the profiles right. Um, yeah. And then there's a new fork of it called Super Slicer if you want to go try that. And then Idea Maker is the other one that would be worthwhile looking at at some point. It seems hmm. to be quite nice. Yeah, it's, I'll say it's very, very interesting. And, uh, you know, the thing is with me, I've always just done what I've done. And it, if it works at the beginning, I don't tend to sort of deviate from that. So, um, you know, with the droid building, it, I've always been, you know, there's something that I've always sort of been able to do and, and do successfully. So ultimately, you know, why would I chop? Why would I change something? But I was just having some real issues with that TPU today. And I thought, well, try the settings out. And again, you know, the temperatures, the, uh, the traction, all that kind of stuff is the same. It's exactly the same. Um, change the slicer. There's something obviously different there, or it processes it, or the G code is processed differently. Or I notice what it does is it kind of rises up and sits there and heats up, uh, whereas Kira kind of doesn't really do that, or the G code sent out doesn't really do that. But no, it's cool. It's very very cool. Anyone use a what does that say? Easy Bot controller. I don't know what that is. What is that? Easy uh, like here Arduino controller. That yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, it's it's an all in one. Um, device that that's meant for little robots uh easy robot they have uh bipeds and a little hex bot and such and and some very easy to use sort of drag and well, drop well, you guys are all bipeds i'm a tripod <laughs> <laughs> it's uh <laughs> i i haven't used it though um but it's a uh, good little controller for a lot of robots the only, cool. the only downfall with it is it's not standalone, my understanding. So, like, you need to – you can kind of make it standalone. You, you need a controller. So, so it's supposed to be tethered to a, to a PC kind of thing and then controls your robot that way. Yeah, I assume it's, it does, like, what uh, you were talking about earlier where you can do multiple – you press one button or a series of buttons and it'll do multiple things. Hmm. Yep, right? absolutely. Yep. Like a macro, yeah. Uh oh, what is this? A oh, how's the resin going? So uh, eventually it will be going. So it's uh, we gotta get the garage all redone. Uh, the weather's starting to finally break pretty good here in Chicago to suburbs. Of Chicago. Show us robot tripod. You you done robot? Oh yeah, I done, uh, yeah. Chris has seen that. So because he knows that I want to do castings with it. So. Mm. So he's waiting for that stuff to come. So, but no, uh, you know, well, I'm getting there. <laughs> so, uh, we, what we should do, guys, is uh, let me sorry, try just for a second. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to whack the uh, link in. If you want to drop in, we're going to run for another 10, 15 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. um, so, if you do want to drop in, uh, I know that's kind of like one of those things where it's either popular or it's not. Um, if you've got any questions for mm -hmm. Trevor, as he's very kindly sort of stayed on. Uh, if you've got any questions for tripod uh, or upskirting or... Um, uh, yeah, I, 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 I do have my favorite dresses. I just won't tell you what they are. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Amazing. Yeah, I, I released a video yesterday or the day before, and on one of my models, the leg failed. It was the left leg, not the right leg. And unfortunately, I looked at it and I go, tripod. And I should have <laughs> done that, but... Um, yeah, I, I, I'm all good. It, uh, my wife it is takes so a, mad at me that I said it, it, it takes a lot of me, a lot. So, <laughs> hey, we got somebody dropping in right now. We've got Dennis. Hello, Dennis. Hey, Dennis. Dennis hey, is everybody. Back. How you doing? I'm always back. Hi, Dennis. <laughs> hey, I think it looks awesome. Let's see what oh, you got going on there with your droid. Great oh, colors. You mine, mine works too. Nice. Oh, wow. Cool. 
Is that like a silk green? Yeah, it's it's all PETG. It's a it's a it's a silk green. That's really cool. Really, I sparkly. I reprinted all my tracks and my wheels with Ninja Flex, and it gets around a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. The yeah. files for that new one aren't up on <laughs> Patreon yet, are they, Sam? Well, they might be. Um, we we have got them. Uh, we were sent them earlier, but again, um, I'm not entirely sure as of yet. But uh, I know it was either going to be released for Easter. Um, that was going to be the idea, I think, behind it. Um, but I don't quite know where we're at with that at the moment. But they, if they're not there now, they will be there very, very shortly, I imagine. Yeah, I, wow. thought, I thought he posted that they were going to be Easter, and I was just over the Patreon. I didn't see him anywhere. So 50, 5001 from Jason M. He's bouncing around on our channels now. Awesome. He's going to be <laughs> Well, well, nonstick. I might be doing a individual live stream on Wednesday. So. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Jason's got, Jason's got money to burn, surely. Yeah, he was on my channel and donated fifty, and I'm not sure whose channel he is on now. So, oh, no idea. No idea. That's funny. That's funny. Uh, okay, so let's uh, take a step back here. Okay, about this yes. presses thing for people that weren't. <laughs> okay, so. I said on the last stream uh, two weeks ago that I and I've just removed him from the stream. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> okay, before we do that, it's not going to moderate my stream. <laughs> so, so I said I'm going to put a functional camera in mine. Okay. And so everyone's like, whoa, oh, well, the head tilts up and down. What's tripod going to do? Upskirting with it? <laughs> so, yeah, it's, uh, and it does work. It works really well. It's Wi Fi. Um, but <laughs> I, oh, wait, wait, it doesn't, I haven't tested it for upskirting. <laughs> so, I didn't say it worked well for that. <laughs> I'd stick with that story. Yeah, everybody video. watching, since there's five of us here, you can actually have five windows open on your other monitor. Mute all the all of them but one, and then you can give us all thumbs ups and watching all of us. So, yeah, anyway. so that's where that came from. Mm. <laughs> so, just wanted to clarify. So, if there's anyone else that wants to pop in on the stream, the link is out there. Yeah. So, uh, so, so, Sunny. so thank you, Jason and Loyal. That was nice of you guys for donating. So, awesome. uh, uh, hi. I haven't laughed so hard on the stream in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should have been on Sam's stream when he was having fits with that because oh. about an hour of it was picking on you. Oh, I know. I, I was <laughs> I was working, so I, I kind of actually came in on the stream at the right time. So. Yeah, <laughs> well, we knew you were digging a hole for your printer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's down there on the floor where it belongs. <laughs> oh, Sam. <laughs> On this new yeah. droid, I should start printing TPU for the next week, right? Printing the tracks. Well, I mean, uh, like I say, I mean, I, I so what, what I've seen, so Michael runs Prusas, right? He's, I think he's got four Prusas, and um, what I've seen him do is he's kind of got them staggered on his build plate. And um, I was like, why are you doing that? And I didn't know if he was printing them singly or if he was printing them over a matter of time. But um, he got his done, obviously, within a few days, and they were racing around because he's using four printers. Okay. Um that being said, though, on my setup here, I'm printing five at the moment. And I think today I've just been inadvertently printing them, you know, just as, and then obviously Bruce decides to claim along. And then I was doing that. Then I was editing videos and I was trying to create content. And then I sprayed the droid. This was sprayed this morning with a chrome. Then I started weathering them up. And I was like, this is what I've got to get done today before tonight. So, uh, you, got a brim, you have a brim on them or anything? Skirt or brim? Brim, huh? Do you have a brim on them or just a skirt around them for an outline? Oh, sorry. I thought you asked if I had a grandma. Sorry. No, um, I, I, I thought you said, are you wearing a skirt too? So I, I, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> not at the moment. Not, well, not, not at the moment. No yeah, kill. Just, just, yeah, so I do. I, so on Prusa Slicer, you can set it so that there are not, you know, I keep talking about this stuff, but it, I just thought it was pretty cool. But it's a double brim that I've put on that. Um, so it sits on there. I've also used a bit of 3D lac because I just didn't want it to move. Obviously, TPU is quite an interesting product because you don't need a heated build plate for it. But so that means, you know, if your bed is quite well used, 
then how is it going to stick or is it going to move or is it, you know, so I, I had some concerns about that. But so far, touch wood, the five I've got on there are printing really nicely and um, long may it continue. And then hopefully by the end of the stream, they'll be finished and then I can swap them over and do another five and carry on until I've got my 60. So, um, and again, you get these little steel rods, they're little helicopter rods. Uh, and all you do is pay, place them in, in between, uh, round off the ends and you're good to go. So, oh, wow. but, um, the, from what I understand, the big, uh, the big version of this that I'm hoping to do, um, the free foot version, it'll use those tracks. So, um, just watch your fingers, I suppose. <laughs> three, three foot version. Yeah. I think we're going to do a three foot version. Uh, Mike and I are going to do, uh, we were talking about it and we were talking about maybe doing a, a YouTube thing where we talk about the CAD. We talk about how things are going to work uh, and make it and break it. And then, you know, obviously at the end of a kind of release something to, you know, if you want to print something crazy and big and because yeah. obviously the idea is on the front here, on the very front, you'll see there's three little holes there for LEDs. Um, so a bigger scaled version of that, I think there'd be a lot more detail, a lot more greeblies and a lot more things that can go into the sides and, you know, put little smoke machines in there or something like that, you know, that kind of thing. So, uh, and again, it's not a Star Wars droid. So there's no copyright. There's no IP. There's no, you know, issues with the, with the CAD files because, you know, this was made by Mike. So, you know, I kind of feel like it's worth embracing it. And if I get it done and if I can make this work and the people that I'm speaking to at the moment, I'm hoping also to be at the um, uh, Birmingham trade show for 3D printing with that droid or with that robot, should I say, um when things start opening back up again so that's my intention anyway so i want to build for that you know show it's all 3d printed and can you, you share know. a picture of the uh, for uh, jason yeah. share a picture of the droid again yeah the yeah. the racetrack uh bb8 uh yeah where is, is that track BB8, yeah racetrack bb8 okay one second let me just try and open that back up again well, bear with me for a moment yeah so that's uh the three foot version. I don't know if I'll put a camera in it. I may not suit its purpose. Anymore, <laughs> so you can probably get inside of it. To be fair, it's um, it's it's a colossal a hidden camera, a little gimbal camera. Hang on, here we go. Yeah. Right, let me share my screen. That's that. That's this one. Yeah, stream two. Here we go. Okay, so this is what we're looking at, and. Um, as you can see here, the, the tracks on this, it's all fully 3D printed. There are a couple of steel rods that go through here and here. What do you think the dimensions are? About a foot long on the tracks and 18 inches tall, guessing? Yeah, I'd say so. The BB-8 the BB style dome here, you know, um, is scale. I don't know what scaling he's used on that. Um, he said the domes are 50% scale. Man, yeah, 50, no, it kind of reminds me of the space shuttle. <laughs> I mean the 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 top part. I you know it's, it's pretty cool looking. So does this remind you of breakfast? <laughs> yeah. Oh yes, I was going to crack an egg right on it. So that's hilarious. That cool. So he's that's got hilarious. he's got some good he's got some good comments off the back of it. And you know again, it's it's one of those things that's just a bit different. And I think you're going to be able to put other things onto this eventually. It's got to be one of those sort of almost like a transformer. You know where you can put stuff on it and you can build it up and do other things with it if you if you so choose to. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of impressed with it. Obviously, like I said before earlier on, you know, we were going to do a completely different droid. We've had a few um, small technicalities with that, um, which means that we're, we're not actually able to do that at this particular point in time. We've tried our best with it, but um, we've got to respect people's wishes, certainly when they've um, devised files for, you know, use within communities and stuff like that. So, um, you know, we, are, we asked for permission and um, they said no. And then we asked them, try to do something else and that didn't work out either so as i say um i think we're going to stick what i really would like to do a pit droid maybe not an rc remote control one but i would like to do maybe sort of look at doing something that's you know standy you know standable style thing um and you know try and push forward could you put a dress on it <laughs> oh, amazing. i love that tripod, uh, oh okay. tripod this is your new thing I this guess. I mean, thing. it's. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the thing is, I have one leg. If I put a dress on, I'll look like a bell. It'd be like ding, 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 <laughs> ding. Okay. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> if I had one leg and I was in a three D printing, which I am, but I don't have one leg, I would print a Terminator Two type metal leg and I'd paint it chrome and I'd have a futuristic robot leg. Oh yeah. 
Uh, there will be a video with my prosthetics sometime soon, so I got to find it. I actually don't know where the hell it is. But. And I know you said something about your other prosthetic hurt really bad. Well, you can get those things removed that they're hurting, and then it won't hurt no more. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> uh, Somebody on Sam's stream was wanting to print you one. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, they were wanting to print you one. They were talking about that, weren't yeah. they? Yes, they were. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, tripod. Um, yeah. Can I, I? Something my wife had asked me, and I, I didn't ask you privately, and I don't know if it ain't appropriate. Don't answer me. How did you lose your leg? Because I don't know if that's something you can talk uh, okay, about. Okay. Well. Okay. So I never really lost it. It was kind of taken away from me. You know. So if I lost it, I'll be looking for it. You know. I lost my artificial leg. I don't know where that's at. Um. It's got uh, so, posters all around town still. Yeah. Like, damn, has anyone seen that leg anywhere? Okay, so um, when I was 15, I, uh, I, my knee, my right knee started hurting really bad. And I was never, I was not that athletic. I was pretty good at baseball. But I just really couldn't start running anymore. And then went to my family physician. They said, oh, I just have a sprained knee. Okay. Okay. And it progressively got worse and worse. Three or four months later, it started getting a um, swelling on it. And I actually, you know, told my mother, I'm like, hey, something's going on. It's just getting worse. And she like brushed it off. So I went to emergency room on my own with a friend and they just took an x-ray and I said, I hyperextended it. Three more months goes down the line and I go back to the family physician. He comes in, looks at it. And then he goes back out, brings in the whole staff. And he said, I misdiagnosed you. Wow. I wound up having a, sar a cancer in my knee, a sarcoma. Mm. And it's, was, it's very rare, very rare. You know, I could have won the lottery versus getting something like this. Okay, so I, instead I got the lottery of losing a limb. So um, I actually went, they said, you need to get a CAT scan now. So I go in there and... The, this is a highlight to a future video because again, it's not just 3D printing I'm into. It's I want to tell this whole story later on, but it I still have the original CAT scan or MRIs of it, and it looks pretty damn gnarly. What's mm -hmm. happened? It looked like the three dimensional view looked like an octopus wrapping around my whole knee. Wow. So, yeah. So the only way to save my life was amputation, and there's groups out there where people. Doctors are trying to do limb-saving procedures, and a person winds up dying because they don't want to give up their limb. I get it. Trust me, I get it. But I had like a week to prepare for it to be amputated. I don't know what's worse is preparing for that week mm. or waking up and it's gone. So I never got out of bed trying to think I'm going to walk to the bathroom, though, <laughs> so it would fall on my face. But no. But that's what happened. And then six years ago, seven years ago, I uh, had cancer again in my colon. But I'm, I'm doing good, so... That's that's the story. What's the um story. just on a lighter note, tripod? If I can ask you this personal <laughs> question, um, what when did the mumbling start? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I <laughs> oh, apparently it just started because. Uh, <laughs> I, I, hey, let's take a poll. Do I mumble? <laughs> no, you don't. You don't. You really <laughs> don't. You really so don't. Good. Good. Kieran, oh, hello. We all have our trolls. Good guys. How's it going? Hi, Kieran. Hey, how you doing? I I, I can relate to tripod. I got diagnosed last year with prostate cancer and oh, wow. three weeks after the diagnosis I was getting mine removed so the less time to think about it the better off you are yeah I, I, wow. I have a problem with doctors they wind up taking things away never giving something good in return but yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I don't know where mine is. I think it's in a jar somewhere so you know that's all it is I, I asked to keep it I'm like what are you going to do with it you know, like, well, we'll biopsy it. I said you already got a biopsy of it so yeah well um, I got biopsies they took 27 biopsies of my prostate. So when they said we're going to remove it, I said, what's left to remove? We're taking 27 biopsies out of the damn thing. It's not that big to start with. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, it's... How high, above your, knee, how, how high above your knee was your, was your leg gone? About halfway up? Uh, uh, it's two-thirds of the way up. So okay. that's why I don't wear a prosthetic because it stabs you. So the prosthetic that they gave me, it's a suction-based one where... You, I have to wrap an ace bandage around and 
push the stump through, pull the ace bandage out as it's ripping across my skin through the valve, put the oh. valve in, squeeze it, put this belt that's about five inches wide around my waist, and I have to literally throw the leg forward every time I take a step. And as I take a step, the inside of the prosthetic rests on the inside of the hip, and it's just hitting. And then sometimes something pinches right there. The <laughs> that is yeah. very unpleasant. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Wow. not exactly the best thing. <laughs> so, okay. Well, at least you're here, dude. You know, and there's somebody said here they're going to put a um, put a song on in a minute. Sarah Mer McLachlan singing Sarah singing, McLachlan. singing for animals. Is that right? <laughs> but uh, you know, hey, you, the good news is you're still here. You still uh, you still survived it, and uh, yeah. you know, it's uh, it's good. It's a good thing, and we can all take the piss out of you. So, you know. <laughs> oh, hey, I mean, it's, it's all good. So, I got to put this slat wall up in the next couple months. So that's going to be me on a one legged dude on a ladder again. So, <laughs> scary oh, thoughts. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, we've talked to, I've talked to Chris Travis before about his daughter being a cancer survivor. I mean, the, you know, five people in my family, including my mother, father, grandparents, brother, and aunt, have all died from cancer. Wow. wow. And uh, two of the times, when I was 15, my mother had cancer when I had cancer, and she passed away 11 months later. My brother had colon cancer. I had symptoms of it. He wound up passing away from colon cancer when I got diagnosed a couple days later. Wow. Yeah, so it's it's very weird being the survivor twice while what, having two of your direct family members die from it. You know, hmm. so... It, it, and I was like, is God telling me something that I need to do? So I'm like, well, maybe it's to be with you guys to give me shit on this stream. <laughs> I'm skirting. <laughs> so that's what I'm here for. And that's uh, you're you're owning it, Tripod. That. That's the story. Just own it. That's it. Yep. Exactly right. <laughs> I owned it. Exactly right. That's it. No, no, man, you do. Own it and carry on. Yep. So how are you doing, Karen? Uh, did you get your droid done? The droid's finished, but... um. As you can see behind me. Uh, Matt German about so two o'clock. Hang out. It's all complete. Well, but uh, nice. been waiting three weeks for the um, s s um, servos and radio control oh. stuff. I'm in Australia, so it's like everything takes months and months oh. and months to get here. So hopefully next week they'll have the servos and actually finish finish putting it together and they can paint the damn thing. But you, no, you it know, turned just, out. I was going to say, out, just um, go for Nice, you know. No, no, really? Oh, that's no, really no. nice. That's beautiful. Sorry, sorry, tripod. It is the CR6, you know. Try, sorry, but I, you know, I mean, we all have our well, problems. I got, yeah, I did have. I got, I got some good news and bad news. Mine, um, yesterday was was giving me the shits. I mean, it was just over extruding, under extruding, giving me the shits. I thought finally the extruder shut itself. I've got a um, easy, um, easy um, extruder in the drawer. I've got a um, all, all metal CR um, Crowley one in the drawer. It's still the original. I've got a spare original, hmm. and um. Bloody loose bolt. One of the mounting bolts had worked its way loose, and that's all it was. Tightened Ooh. it up, got as good as gold again. Wow! So, it's still the original extruder, so surprisingly. Well, there are some good news yeah. is here, Kieran. We are um, CR6 SE survivors. Um, <laughs> this is yeah. true, true, true. Y'all yeah, are <laughs> <laughs> twice over. This is the survival draw. Club. It's just luck of the draw, you know. And and and, and um, what can you do? You just get. Uh, yeah, the Friday afternoon, go home for lunch and, go, and don't come back. You know that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. so if someone had someone had to get one. Unfortunately, it was John. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know what? I, I I'm a winner when it comes to this stuff. So, yeah, that's it exactly. I mean, all you can do it's good to have one that plays up, so you can pull the thing apart and actually work out what's going on with it. It's not a bad thing. Better better have it broken and fix it than. Yeah, Dominic said it'd be nice if we could have a meetup in Chicago. I think it'd be great if everybody came to Las Vegas. That'd be cool because I live here. <laughs> 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 Always a lot going on in Las Vegas. Yeah, and whatever whatever tripod picks, you just follow him. You he'll make a fortune. He's he's a lucky yeah. sod. Well, if you go to Chicago, <laughs> oh, oh wait a minute, I'm right to lock here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I heard I heard John was banned from Vegas for upskirting, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they said, oh, he's bringing Tito with. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, I'd, oh, I'd like man. to come out. I'd like to come out and do a little bit of a tour. I think you know. I, I had this idea on the stream um, last week where uh, I was thinking of going back to China and probably get down into Shenzhen and try and get into you know see what actually is how these printers are made and look at the filament. And a couple of people have been quite good about sort of sharing information. I was trying to do a video on how um, filament is made and all that kind of stuff. And um, some factories don't want to don't want to let anybody in and show what they're up to because yeah. you know for various reasons i suspect like how how you know how people are treated and how and age and things like that and the, uh, school yeah. buses, the elementary school buses pull up and leave early in the morning and show up late at night you never know <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly so so that, there's there's that and then um obviously i'd love to come out to the states and you know try and do some streaming out there while uh you know sort of do a little mini tour or whatever so um so that's the plan anyway but um no. probably not this year <laughs> yeah. yeah it's uh, it's already going by pretty quickly so yeah exactly yeah, it's uh exactly. but uh uh yeah, this has been good laughs so you have anybody out there watching this building any of these droids whether you're working on the first one the second one or the third mm -hmm. one you're getting ready to do it doesn't mm -hmm. matter where you drop it. you're gonna be starting your first one right now you're always welcome um you know we're all in this together and everybody watching you know if you don't want to pop in on video that's fine but you're you're welcome to if anybody like oh, to oh, just donate yeah so um if if you want to know where the files are you can reply to any one of our streams in the chat or whatever mm -hmm. context through you know the about section on there and shoot us a, a message and we'll let you know where those files are. in my and, description below i've got a link to everybody here on screen in my description i'm assuming every guy here did that there's links to each of us in the on the other videos. I'll ping out the clickbait channel as well. Sorry? It's all there in Tim's clickbait channel as well. That's my clickbait That's channel. It. Yeah. <laughs> so I've just I've just pasted uh, Mr. Badley's Patreon page. Mr. Badley uh, or Badelli as we know him as uh, is the is the creator of a lot of these files. So um, as I say, he's um, yeah, there you go. There's the link in the description now, guys. Um, as I say, he, he does a lot of work with this and, um, you know, occasionally he drops in and uh, has a chat with us as well, which is very nice of him. Uh, but, uh, yeah, like I say, there, I think, I believe he's got 150 more designs sitting in Fusion at the moment. Oh, wow. The man so, in chat, red, the man in chat, red light is a recycler. That's what he does for a living. Could you imagine if we were in the age of droids and they were everywhere? He would be the <laughs> to go to. Yep. He have nowhere to store all the bits and pieces. He have to buy a couple yeah. more warehouses. He has a garage full. He works at work. He has different cranes. He has magnets. He picks up stuff. And he's into all kinds of electronics and scrapping and getting gold and copper, whatever you get out of electronics. But that's what he does his living. Was any headway made on the large TEDO? Um, yeah, we're looking We're looking at that at the moment. That's uh, something me and, me and Mike are talking about right now. We're going to be doing some streaming on it. And uh, I think with the... Uh, I'm going to get it out again. I know I have to keep getting it out. I'm probably going to get into this. This little roll of filament that I got. So, um, yeah, we're going, to be, uh, we're going to be doing some stuff with that. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, so, I, I sure hope that spool doesn't get mounted on top of the printer. <laughs> well, we, we were talking about how a crazy way of doing it, and um, there's been a lot of suggestions about uh, yeah. Yes about putting a uh, extruder motor, a twinning the extruder motor, and as it turns, it'll turn that so it doesn't, so the direct drive doesn't have to pull everything and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Hey, Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Hey, hey Jeff. 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 How you doing? That looks great. Looks Very nice. cool. Yeah. Great paint job oh, on that. Nice colors, yeah, nice colors. Oh, wow. I've got a... Oh, oh, you went with the pistol grip controller, too. Well... Yeah, and I'm not quite sure how much I like it, but it was one of the two. Yeah, it's, it's the Dumbro or Dumbork or. <laughs> it will dump, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, okay, so when someone mentioned pistol grip two weeks ago, I'm like, I just don't see it. <laughs> so uh, I don't see how controlling it would be that easy. So well, how is it working out? Well, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's. It's not too bad. What's what so I have I noticed, problem with is is the head. You know, that I've got some little knobs on. Different control. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Cool. Good. But but it works. It works. That's yeah, the important thing. It works. Very nice. Thank you for showing us. Yes. Thank you. So uh, for cool. your treads, though, yeah. what filament and uh, what infill and 
settings yep. did you use? That's the that's the Ninja Flex. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, everyone's got the Ninja Flex, but yeah. Yeah, that's kind of get it. Yeah, it's hard to get right now. I yeah, bought Yo-Yu yeah. Yeah. off Amazon in the it's U.S. I it. bought Yo-Yu, and it's supposed to be just as soft as Ninja Flex. The short number, what's it supposed to be, like an 85? 85, 85. Yeah, that's feet. what it's supposed to be, and this is on Amazon. Yeah. Okay. Don't need it. I've been using my well, Bonte extruder. Yeah, I use Bonte extruders. I use slice engineering stuff. i tell you what, Marcel, you look like you've been told off by your mum. What's going on? Nothing. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> 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 tell us tell us a little bit about the battle droid in the background mm -hmm. battle droid i've uh, been working on him for quite a while actually his arms need to be uh, put in place but i've been redesigning the shoulder mounts uh so that i actually get full rotation and uh everything instead of just up and down uh but i've had to redo all that stuff do a huge uh, bolt, an M10 bolt through the hips and stuff like that, but it's still not super, super stable yet, but it's getting well, there. Whose files are they? Uh, that's actually a Thingiverse file. Oh, so wow. Because wow. I, wow. I wanted to redesign it myself anyway. Yeah, um, yeah. A lot of work. Nice. That's good. That's good. That's good. Cool. All right. Someone asked um, a quick question what drive i was using in bb8 and i don't actually have a drive in bb8 right now but it's uh will be a joe's drive is what i'm working on yeah. i'd answer that question. are you able to show the do you have any electronics in bb8 right now uh just, i have the drive in the other room but it's uh it's only about 60 percent done i kind of got to the electronic stage and that's usually where i i uh sometimes don't 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 get stuff done there. I prefer the, the build stage. Oh, wow. Totally. It's huge. Yes. It, it is a big, wow. big ball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, okay. So, uh, how, many how many pieces? How many pieces? drive typically attaches axle drive there. You can see it. Looks like four pieces on the orange and three on the uh, end caps, or five end caps. Uh, six six circles and then triangles that go in between between the circles. So you have you have the, the circle panels okay. here, and then, that, and then these are called triangle panels. That and the prime band of the whole rattle can. Uh, this is rattle can for the color, and then a two K automotive clear for the clear coat because I wanted something very durable to. Right. Um, oh. If I do make this so a rolling brush. Nice, very nice. It's very nice. Uh, a little bit too shiny for a BB B unit, but roll it out in the backyard. Uh, it'll wear out that long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can always tone it down, right? No, I, I wanted the two part clear just so we'd be more, a little more robust. If you have grandkids, let them play with it for five minutes. It'll be, you know, yeah. yeah. Morning. <laughs> so I mean, if. Uh, we may want to wrap it up here soon for Sam. Yeah, he's going to be passing out shortly over there. So. <laughs> yeah, all of our UK friends are probably pretty tired. Could be, so. yeah, could be. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Well, yeah, like I say, um, what are you, anyone streaming this weekend? Anyone doing anything interesting this weekend before we go? I've got to hang out tomorrow at 2 o'clock. I'll be doing a hangout on my channel if anybody wants to drop by or stop in. I'm going to be trying out a new melon. I think I can only have six people at a time in. But I can do it in 1080p, and it's cheaper than StreamYard. So hmm. I'm going to give that a go tomorrow. And if, I, if it works out good, then I'm going to switch over. Great. Cool. Yep. Yeah, we've been trying um, We've been trying a, di a load of different stuff. Streamlabs is one I've been trying to get on with. I did a stream of it last week, but it wasn't very responsive. Um, so Melon came up, and there were one or two others, but it just seemed to be the better solution. Um, so I'm hoping it's got kind of very similar features that, as, as with StreamYard. But I did cancel it today, and they cried and sent me an email and said why are you leaving and i said well it's just it's just not oh, you know, it? the, the, i can get it elsewhere for cheaper so you yeah. know so it's a buyer's market um but um yeah brilliant but well, thank you guys thanks for tuning in and one question, uh, guys one question John, are, you, are you doing any streaming this weekend oh tim um, got a giveaway well, uh, yeah right? yeah, yeah sorry yeah. just starting, yeah. just starting okay. cutting people off i'm going to bed now see you later no <laughs> <you're> <laughs> <going on. laughs> i'm doing Sunday, Sunday at six o'clock Mountain Standard Time, five o'clock Jerry's time, and I think seven o'clock or eight o'clock John's time, etc. 
I'm doing a uh, I'm doing a giveaway to celebrate the fact that I reached over 500 subscribers. Yeah, well done. Well done. Nice job, man. Nice job. Well, I've got a few stuff. sponsors giving giving away some filament, a few things from Wham Bam, etc. So yeah, tune in, and the more people that tune in, and the less people that tune in, the more chance you have of winning. So tune in because <laughs> we don't want you know. Jerry wants him to be the only one on the stream, but I don't know if that's going to happen. That'd be a pretty yeah. looking wheel of names. Yeah, small, yeah, small yeah. circle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm going to be doing a. I was supposed to receive a, a machine today. It got bumped until maybe Monday, so I might be doing a live stream on Wednesday. So cool. If it arrives on time. And I'm <laughs> so, currently, I got an anti-cubic quote on Mono X that came in the mail a few days ago. I'm currently working on a video, so hopefully I'll get that edited tonight and I can get that posted tomorrow. So cool. Yeah, I've got is... another ender to unbox. Hey, hey! Can't wait for that one. Oh yeah! So, this is my next it. video. It's, what is it? What is it? I, I don't know. You have this is the only part. Oh, you see. You get the the right. Right. Yeah. In fact, so John, can like, you, John, can I you like send me your address? John, can you send What's me your that? address at some point? I might start sending yeah. stuff to you just for a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> new dresses, new skirts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I knew it. Where's yeah. oh, you're right over there. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah everybody here on the screen everybody has dropped in thank you very much it's, we love having people come on and show us what you're doing and everybody watching you know please like subscribe to everybody here and below in the description on each of our channels there's links to the other guys and where you can get the files though and subscribe on mr bagley's patreon or bedelli however you want to pronounce it and uh yeah, yeah. Um, Good stuff, guys. Well, thank you very much. I'm just going to end it now. Make sure you keep your dresses on. We will see you next time. Yeah. Bye for now. Your pants on at least. Anyway. When did, when did Bye, they everybody. become a prerequisite? <laughs>